Okay, the next step in our herringbone box is to start making the pieces we need for this herringbone pattern. So I'm going to need some dark and light wood, and I'm going to use my plans here to figure out we need walnut and maple for that. And I need to look and find the dimensions for those. So we will need on this page right here, I'm looking at this dimension, the thickness of these stripes is going to be 3 eighths of an inch. And also the thickness of our assembled piece will be 3 eighths of an inch. This is important right now because I need to know how much of this assembly to make. So after cutting, I'm going to need 3 eighths plus a curve. So if we figure a half an inch per strip, that's going to be one inch for this. So one, two, same thing here, one, two, three, four inches total. Plus I'm going to need enough to hold on to with the miter saw. So I need another eight inches. So a total of 12 inches per board. And I'm going to need, looking back at my picture, one, two, three, four strips of walnut and four strips of maple. Okay, so it's four strips of a half an inch, or sorry, four strips of 12 inches long by three eighths of an inch wide. Okay, we're gonna go back to the wood room and we're gonna find that right now. Got some scraps here I probably could use too. I like to try to use up stuff that nobody else is going to use. So I've found this piece of maple here and that's going to be, that's three quarters of an inch and I only need three eighths of that. So we'll probably just take this whole thing, cut that down into 12 inch pieces and use that. Looks like it's already jointed on one edge. Ooh, that's going to be a tricky one because that's already three fourths. What I might do is stand that up on end and cut them down this way because I want this to be taller than my final project. Okay, so that right a little more than three fourths. We're going to plane that down after it's glued together. So this will be perfect here. And I've got this piece of walnut here. I can get a couple 12 inch pieces out of this just fine and that's probably going to be totally usable. Okay, remember we just need four strips. I'm probably going to make five just to be sure. Uh, we're going to cut these down into 12 inches and then rip them to 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to joint this edge first. Uh, we're going to go out here and take care of that now. All right, we're going to cut these to length first. Okay, since I don't have my tape measure, I'm just going to use the saw gear here to make my measurements. We're going to go 12 inches, set that into action. And make our cuts here. So we'll need five of these. Let's lock that. One. Five. Hopefully somebody can use this leftover piece. And I got this ugly piece of walnut. We're going to make this useful today. Think I can get five out of that? Eh, sketchy. I'm going to cut one more just because I don't want to come back here. And when we're done with the saw gear, we're going to send that back down to 12 feet. Get it out of the way. And turn it off. Okay, when you're doing this, it's best if you work together and several of you share this so that you have little waste. Remember, we're going to have 8 inches left over just to hold on to it in the miter saw. So that's a lot of wasted material. So not counting this piece. I think this one might just go on the burn pile. I've got a full board foot of lumber right here just to make the herring bones. Okay, so the maple here, we've got that jointed. It's surfaced on three sides already, so we'll leave that at the table saw. I do need to joint the walnut, and since I'm working, probably be working from both ends on this one, I'm going to joint both edges just to be sure right at the limit of my fence there. Okay, I've 
I've got a little bit right there. We're gonna do one more pass. Okay, now I'm here at the table saw. I've got my five pieces of maple that I've already cut and my two pieces of walnut. We need to make these into strips that are three eighths of an inch wide. Remember we want this to be more than three quarters of an inch tall because when we glue these together, they're gonna slide around. And they're gonna do kind of like that. I'll exaggerate a little bit. When we plane it, we need to have enough to plane down so that it's still three quarters of an inch, right? If we start with three quarters of an inch of our thickness, and then they move around, then it'll be sh less than three quarters when we're done. We don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna lay these so that I've got my surface edges down, my rough edges up, and I'm going to set my fence to three eighths of an inch. Right there, right there, and I always like to double check with another measuring tool, make sure I'm right at three eighths of an inch. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and make all these cuts now. I don't want that piece, so I'm going to flip it around. Got four. All right. There's my five pieces there. My five pieces there. Let's turn them the same way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these back since I'm not using these. putting wood in here the wood goes under the sign I'm not even gonna put that one in there put that on my burn pile for later okay last thing we need to do is glue this up so we'll need a couple of clamps on a table that appears to be just a little bit at an angle there All right, I noticed my, my table saw seems to have fanned out a little bit. So I'm just gonna flip one side over so that those are roughly parallel. It's probably like less than a 10th of a degree, but it does make a difference. All right, and then we're gonna arrange these in a dark light pattern. Like so. I'm gonna get a couple of clamps. In fact, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a couple of bigger boards just to put even pressure on those for clamping. This one here has, oh, this one right here has got kind of an unfinished edge, so I'm gonna put that on the outside. I'm gonna check when I push those together that there's nothing, there's no gaps there. Okay, so this one right here had some snipe on the end, so I went ahead and shifted him to the outside because we're gonna cut that off and not use it. Okay, we need some type one glue and some clamps. There's my type one glue. That was a loud piece of uh, redwood. And we're going to use, I like these just because they sit well on the workbench.
and there's never a shortage of scrap wood lying around that we can use for various different things. So in this case, we're just going to set those in there. <laughs> okay, if you're working together and you're making a longer section of this, you might want three or four clamps. But this will work just fine for now. Get everything staged up so that once I put the glue on, I can work quickly. Okay, so that's what I'm going to make. Ultimately, we're going to make 30 degree cuts on this at 3 eighths of an inch. But for today, we just need to get these buggers glued up. What I do is I take this and just kind of mash it around a little bit. Separate them, make sure I got coverage. Need a little bit more on the end. And a little bit right there. We want enough glue that it completely covers the wood, but we don't want to have a ton of gooing out either. All right, the glue's on. Again, I'm using these boards to do two things. One is to uh, keep from denting the wood, but also I want to distribute my clamping pressure across the entire thing because we're going to cut these in little strips. We need to make sure that that glue is really even. Clamp it down there. And I can see glue oozing out of all the spaces there, so I know I've got good coverage. And then I do want to write my name, the date, and the time on here. Sneak that in there. Okay, the reason I write the date and time is then I can know when I can take these out of the clamps. If somebody else needs these clamps tomorrow, they can look and they can say, oh yeah, it's been more than an hour. We can take those out and move on. Okay, I'm gonna go take this glue, close the top. Look at that little blob right there. We want the next person to be happy. So we are just going to take a paper towel, wipe that off, and put this back in the wood room. I always manage to do one thing in every video that makes noise, and that was it right there. All right. So tomorrow, we'll come back here, we'll cut those into strips, and we'll start assembling them together.